unfortunately you suffer from atrial fibrillation and I know that you don't know anything about it you can't feel your heart rhythm beating abnormally but atrial fibrillation is there and what that means is that the atrium which is the top chamber of your heart is beating very rapidly it's beating so rapidly that in fact it can't move at all and if you look at it it's rather like a bag of worms just squirming and the result of that is blood is not expelled from all of the atrium with every heartbeat and it can stagnate particularly in one part of the left atrium because it stagnates a clot can form and if this clot forms and then detaches from the atrium it can go around the circulation and go up the arteries to the brain and block one of those arteries this can cause a stroke it is very important if you have atrial fibrillation to protect yourself against having a stroke if you have atrial fibrillation you are five times more likely to have a stroke than somebody who doesn't ischemic strokes those caused by blood clots are the most common for people with atrial fibrillation in fact nine out of ten strokes in people with AF are ischemic. Many people with atrial fibrillation or AF have no idea that it is a major cause of stroke. AF related stroke is one of the most severe devastating strokes that you can have. So what we have to do is make sure that all AF patients have treatment to prevent clots forming, therefore reducing their risk of an AF related stroke. For patients with atrial fibrillation, it's absolutely vital that they have anticoagulation therapy because this helps to decrease their risk of having a stroke. By taking anticoagulant therapy, their blood will not clot so quickly and they are at less risk of a blood clot and a blood clot travelling to the brain and causing a stroke. Until recently, the main anticoagulant available for AF patients has been warfarin. This is quite a well-established old drug and if used properly, it could be very effective, reducing the risk of an AF-related stroke by about 65%. However, it's a, a therapy which many people um, found difficult to manage. And warfarin is a drug that tends to interact with other drugs and with food. And so we have to be very careful about the exact dose of warfarin that you need. In order to make the correct prescription, we have to test your blood every so often to see what the warfarin effect is. In the past two years, I think one of the most welcome pieces of news for all AF patients is that there is now new options for anticoagulation. I think for an individual, this means that not only can their risk of suffering an AF-related stroke be significantly reduced, but also their health the consideration of their lifestyle, whether they can access clinics regularly, whether they're in work, their food, everything can now be considered and they can still be cared for successfully by reducing the risk of stroke. Compared with warfarin, the novel oral anticoagulants have all shown that they are either better than or equivalent to warfarin with regard to the reduction of stroke or something called systemic embolism, which is a blood clot going to another organ in the body. For patients, having a choice of oral anticoagulation so that they can lead their lives as they want and not have to worry about what they eat, what they drink, will make such a difference. However, you should speak to your doctor about the exact risks and benefits of each anticoagulant and then decide between you which is best for you.